All right, Math 100 students, we are on part two, which is number 38. Okay, so these are fairly easy. You're just going to help me kind of um, get it rationalized. Is that, That's what they call it in the book. So let's get started. All right, so it's not a whole lot of things I can do with this, except for I'm thinking of two over four. I can reduce my fraction, meaning I can find a number that'll go into both of them and reduce two over four. But of course, all of you already know that two over four is reduced down to what? One half. Good. Because two will go into two one time. Four divided by two is two. So the only difference is you just need your X. It was already on top. And in the book, you may see X over two because sometimes they don't put the one because it's already understood. But if you put the one in front, I understand exactly what you're trying to tell me. Okay, number 40, just that easy. Okay, so I have negative 6x over 18. I really don't have anything to do with it, but try to reduce it. All right, let me think of a number that will go into 6 and 18. I'm thinking 6. 6 goes into 6 one time. 6 goes into 18 three times, all right? And my negative was already in front. So the only difference is the X was on the top. So I want to move my X on the top as well. In the book, you may see negative X over Three, they may not have the one in front, but if you do, that's fine. So it's just, just really simple, nothing too hard. All right, just like we talked about in class. So if you have um, X to the second power, Y to the third power over X to the second power, Y to the fourth power. Remember we talked about they, these in class, we broke them down and then we figured out how many we had left over. Now notice we got X squared at the top and X squared at the bottom. See how they cancel out just like we did in class? Well, you're going to do the same thing. You got three Y's on the top. You got four Y's at the bottom. You're telling me how many do you have left over? Okay, so I have four, four at the bottom, three at the top. Cancel, cancel, cancel. What do I have? I have Y. Where is it? It's at the bottom. So when we talked about this in class, what did we do at the top? We put a one if I don't have nothing left. Okay, just like we did in class. So the answer is one over Y. Because I had eliminated all of the X's and the Y's. There was nothing on top. So I couldn't just leave it blank. I had to do something with it. Okay. Let's look at 44. I can't reduce 7 over 5. So I'm going to leave that alone. Um, what can I do with Y squared and X squared? Nothing. I can't uh, uh, factor anything out. So this is called, it's in its simplest form. I can't do anything with it. It's already simplified for me. Already. I can't do anything with that. Okay. Now, help me factor this out because this is not like numbers 25 through 36. The directions on this one say write each expression in simplest form. So that means I need you to help me help me factor this out. Okay. Just like we did in class, I want you to go back and look at uh, section 5.3. Okay. So I'm going to factor this out. I'm factor out an A because I'm thinking about factor tree. Factor this out and tell me what they both have in common, which is an A. All right? So I want you to think factor tree. All right? Just in case you have to go back and look. Factor tree. All right? So if I factor an A out, I need A squared. So what am I missing? You're missing A. Okay? Put your minus sign. Right here, I need 10A. What am I missing? The 10. If you go back and do a uh, distributive property, A times A, just like the rainbow, is A squared. A times 10 is negative 10A. Okay, so far so good. All right, what do I need here? Factor tree, I want y'all to think factor tree. Tell me a number that they both have in common. That number is four. They have a four in common. Then open up the one set of parentheses. What am I missing? I need 4A. I have four, okay? Right here, put my minus sign. I need 40. Four times what will give me 40? 10. Very good. So that means this thing is the exact same, canceling out. So what do I have left? A over 4. A over 4. That's it. So it's like rationalizing. You're factoring and canceling things out. Okay? Look at this one. All right? I want you to think factor tree. What, what do they have in common? I can factor out an X. They have an X in common. What do I need? I need X squared. What do I have? I only have one X. I need one more to make it complete. All right, bring my plus sign down. What do I need here? I need three X. What do I have? I have the X, but I'm missing the three. Good. Okay, right here, I have two X plus six. So what can I do with 48? What can I do with 48? 
All right, can I do anything with 48? Let me, y'all, let me look and check to see that I write the right problem down. I did not. It did not have a parentheses around it. Sorry, it did not have a parentheses around it. Okay, so if it didn't have it around, let y'all, I'm looking at the book, make sure, you know, your teacher getting, well, I'm getting younger by the day, but still. All right, anyway, my mistake, I, don't, I didn't write the parentheses. Okay, this is the correct problem. This is right. I didn't write this correctly. So I will still factor out a two, all right? Now here, I need two X, what am I missing? X, okay, bring my plus sign down. I need six, what do I have? I have two, two times what will give me a six? Three, very good. Now I can cancel it out. Miss Thomas, I need you to write the correct problem down, ma'am. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it, bear with me. Okay, let me look at 50 and make sure your girl wrote down the right problem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, we, we rolling. Okay, so here, if I factor out, we're using factor tree to see what they have in common. So they both have an X in common. So what am I missing? I'm missing an X. And I need six X, what am I missing? A six. Okay, here in the denominator spot, I got five X squared plus six. It's nothing I can do with that. I wrote the right problem. But this right here is in simplest form. I can't do anything with it, guys. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. All right, 52. All right. I can factor out a 2x if I do my factor tree right. All right, tell me what they have in common. So I need 2x to the second power. I have 2x, but the only thing I'm missing is I need one more x to make it complete. Bring down my minus sign. Well, I need 2x. I have 2x. So what would you put here? A 1. You have everything you need. You put a 1. A placeholder. Okay. Factor tree. Think of factor tree. What do they both share? When you get through doing your factor tree, it should be a 5. All right. I need 5x. I have 5, but I'm missing the what? The x. Okay. Right here. I need 5. I have 5. 5 times what would give me 5? 1. Okay, cancel it out, and your answer is 2x over 5. So it's just like factoring out, rationalizing. I'm turning the page. Your teacher is working. Turning the page. Okay, for number 54, they had the work done for you. This will cancel out without doing any work. It only left me with 2. That's it. That's all I can do with it. That's all they left me with. Okay, let's look at 56. X plus X is 2X. If I add them up, remember, one goes here, one goes there, divided by two. What well, can I cancel out? The twos. What does that leave me with? The X. That's it. That's it. Okay. Here, I may have to do a little factoring here. All right, I'm doing thinking of my factor tree. Okay. So here I have 4Y. What do I need? I need 8. I need eight. So four times what to give me eight? Two. I got one Y. How many do I need? I need a total of two. So I need one more to make that complete. All right. Minus sign. Okay. So here I need four Y. What do I have so far? I have the four and the Y. So I just need the one. All right. So far so good. All right. Next. Y minus four. Hmm. I cannot cancel out anything. This is in simplest form. All right, I worked it all the way out. It's nothing for me to, to cancel. I don't have anything to cancel out at all. All right, 60. Okay. This looks like it's already simplified, but let me look down here at this denominator down here. I'm going to keep this just like it is. All right, let me think of a, I um, want you think factor tree. Go back and think of your factors, okay? Your factor tree, okay? Just in case you forgot. All right, so they have a 5 in common and an X in common. Okay, so here I need I have five I need five x to the second power. I have five x. I need one more x to make it complete. All right, next I need thirty x. I have x, but I need thirty. Five times what would give me thirty? A six. All right. So even though they have this backwards, this this is a positive. So this is just like really saying x plus six. It's just written backwards. It will cancel out. Okay, leaving you with five x on the bottom. You need to put a one at the top to make it complete for me. And that's it. 
Okay. On 62, I need you to help me a whole lot with this one. I need parentheses everywhere. Okay. How can I make this complete? All right. I have an X here and an X here. Okay. I need six, a negative six, but a positive one. Okay. So I just put a one, just, just a reminder. All right. I'm thinking, of course, three times two. That'll help me out greatly. Okay. So I need the middle to be positive. So I mean, that means the bigger number needs to be positive. Okay. So I'm thinking of my little rainbow X squared, negative two X plus three, negative two plus three is positive one. All right. Ne positive three times negative, neg if I multiply and I get negative six. So I know the top is right. All right. Down here in the denominator spot, X and X. Uh, let's see. I need a negative one here. All right, so I'm thinking about my two time tables, two times one. That's the only two factors I can think of. So I need the negative to go here in front of the larger number. All right, so that way that'll give me um, x squared, positive 1x, negative 2x, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And if I multiply them, I get negative 2. Anything I can cancel out? Good, these two. And that leaves you with X plus three X plus one. Okay, so far so good. All right, get my sets of parentheses set up here for you. All right, X times X. All right, the only two numbers I can think of is seven times one up here on, the, on this numerator side, this, this uh, numerator top. So if I want a negative six in the middle, that means the bigger number has to be negative if I need a negative. Uh, in the middle has to be so I want you to remember how to do the rainbow all right next here at the denominator x and x I need seven I'm thinking of seven times one this time I need both everything in here needs to be positive okay everything in here needs to be positive anything you can you see that I can cancel perfect you can't cancel the x minus seven because it does not have the same sign you just got to leave it Okay, we're factoring. We're still on it. Uh, this time, let me factor out a 3y because it didn't give me three terms. Like this had one, two, three terms. This has one, two. So I only have two terms really to work with one, two. This has one, two, three. That's how I know I need double parentheses. All right, I just need one set. So 3y is my factor tree, what I can factor out. So I need y. And what am I? I need a 15. Three times what to give me 15? Five. All right, so that top is 3y in parentheses, y minus 5. But here I got 1, 2, 3. So I have two sets of parentheses down here in the denominator spot. So I have a y here and a y here. Okay. So 2 times 5, that would give me 10, right? 2 times 5, okay, or 5 times 2, whatever you want to put, that's fine. Okay, so I need a negative 3. So the negative needs to be in front of the bigger number. Okay, so let me try. Let me think. Okay, so y, 2y. So 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Got it. Okay, let me cancel that out. What are you left with? 3y on top and y plus 2 in a denominator spot. I know y'all getting a hang of it, but you know I have to make sure. All right, factor tree, factor tree. Let me factor out a three. Let me see how many times 81 will go into three. 27. Okay, so I factor out a three. So I need the y to the third power, and I need 27 to make that complete. 27. All right, here. I need y here and y here. All right, so I need a three and a three. So here I need both of them to be negative or both of them to be positive. Hmm, let me think. Both of them to be negative or both of them to be positive. Okay, I'm thinking, let's see, positive nine and a negative three in the middle. Hmm, can I make that argument? Even if I did one positive, one negative, I don't see me getting a negative three here in the middle. Because if I made both of these negative and, or one positive and one negative, I don't see it. 
I don't see it making it complete here on 60 unless I wrote the wrong problem. Okay, I don't see it at all. I don't see it working. All right, so let's go, but let's put this in simplest form. And I'll go back and I'll look and see if I did the right problem. Put it in simplest form. Okay, look at this one. All right, x squared minus 81. This is called a perfect square because x plus 9 and x minus 9 will give you what you need, meaning you have a zero in the middle. And it works, it works when it's negative. That's why it's hard to work when it's a positive. Okay, it works better when it's a negative because if you do the, the rainbow, x squared, negative 9 plus 9 is zero. That's what you want. It has nothing in the middle. 9 times negative 9 is negative 81. This is called a difference of squares, so you need to look that up. All right, next, let me get my two sets of parentheses here, x here and an x here. I need 81, so I'm thinking, of course, 9 automatically, and I need a positive 81 here, but a negative 18 in the middle. So let me think, a negative 18 in the middle. Can I do both of them negative, guys, and girls? Can I do that? A negative time, a negative is a positive, so that would definitely work, all right? So here, I can cancel this out, and it leaves me with the x plus 9 in the numerator spot and the x minus 9 in the denominator spot. Okay. And the last one, because I don't mean you want to get on your nerves, but you know, I have to make sure you guys understand. All right, so I need, I factor out an x. I'm thinking about the factor tree. So that gives me x squared minus, and I need, if I have an x and there's nothing here, I need a placeholder. So let me put a one. Okay, and you do know that x squared, we like, we talk about perfect squares. So it only works with like nine, x plus three, x minus three. This one will work with x plus one x minus 1. All right, difference of squares. All right, it's the same thing. This right here is the same as x plus 1, x minus 1. First, outer, inner, last, difference of squares. Okay, here I need a fact out of 5x. Get closer. Get my parentheses right there. 5x, so what am I missing? I need an x squared. Okay. And I need a one. Y'all agree? Okay, make sure. All right. So that means this would have canceled out anyway. So what about the X's? Yep, they would have canceled out too. Well, that would let me a five. The five is we're on the top or on the bottom. On the bottom. Y'all, this would have been a, a regular answer. One over five for number 72. One over five. All right, I hope, I know the video is long, about 15, 16, 17, 18 minutes, uh, but it was necessary for me to make sure I show you all of it. Thank you so much, and y'all have a good day.